So Professor Isabel is a Dick Fellow at Princeton University since 2016, and she obtained her PhD from University of Wisconsin in 2014, and her research uh, basically focuses uh, primarily on studying physics that decays to tau leptons, so using data collected by CMS experiment at LHC. And her recent publication uh, on observation of Higgs goes on decaying to pair of tau lepton is based significantly on uh, her long-term work to improve the detection and acquisition and reconstruction uh, identification and measurement of tau lepton. So she has like uh, contributed to basically tau lepton identification thoroughly. And uh, she's also very active in designing the algorithms and implementing firmware for level one trigger selection at CMS, uh, even in the high luminosity era. So, yeah, now I zoom over to uh, Professor Isabel. So we, this is the last experimental talk and then we'll switch the gears to theory. Yeah, you can okay, get thank started. You. Thank you so much for that lovely inter introduction. And um, I'll say in advance that it does mean that I, I, I do notice tau's more often in these analysis analyses, so I will point them out as well uh, due to my longstanding work with tau leptons. Um, but also, in many cases, uh, tau leptons are an excellent tool for studying B the BSM Higgs or exotic Higgs at the LHC. Um, so we'll, we'll discuss them in this talk uh, going, going ahead. Um, so in addition, I'm also working on a snow mass process at, um, the, within the US, and we're talking about the future of colliders. So I, I decided also I'll put one or two slides at the, at the end. Um, and if we can get to them, we'll discuss a little bit about what we can, um, about what we are thinking about as we go towards uh, the SNOMAS final report. Um, but again, it's just a couple of slides and you'll hear more about all these things tomorrow, so do stay tuned. Okay, let me see if this will work. Uh, yes, okay. So just as a quick, quick, uh, we have a few introductory slides, uh, just as a, probably a recap um, and a little bit to set the stage for the talk. So in the standard model, there's only one complex Higgs doublet. Uh, this is responsible for electroweak symmetry breaking. Uh, there's one neutral CP even Higgs boson, and which we usually call little h or big h. However, there are many questions that remain. Um, and so uh, we've been discussing this quite a lot uh, recently in terms of how to frame the usefulness of the Higgs uh, to our external colleagues. Um, and really what we can see is that Higgs physics has, uh, has an arm in a, all of, in a, a large different array of, of uh, important questions that we have about, um, about physics today, including things like what is the origin of electroweak symmetry rating? That makes uh, quite a lot of sense. It can also tell us a little bit about naturalness, maybe the origin of masses, CP violation, things like stability of the universe. Um, and there's also a question of, is this a unique particle? Is it a fundamental or is it a composite? Uh, is it the only fundamental scalar particle known to um, humanity? Or is there a, hidden, a Higgs portal um, to hidden sectors, uh, so some accessibility to looking for physics beyond the standard model? So how to search for the BSM Higgs? So first we have to ask ourselves, what do we mean by the BSM Higgs? Um, what we mean is, uh, is the Higgs observed at the LHC, the standard model Higgs of the, of, uh, the standard model Higgs or the Higgs from an extended sector? A sector. Um, uh, theorists and phenomenologists have provided a large number of models to guide us at the LHC and beyond. Uh, and we use these models to think about, okay, how, what sort of analyses do we want to design? How do we, what sort of limits do we want to set? Uh, how can we search for the Higgs? So we have models such as a Higgs singlet, two, two Higgs doublets, two Higgs uh, doublets plus, uh, two, two Higgs doublet models with single, uh, single uh, pseudoscalar, composite Higgs, Higgs pearls, dark matter, flavor changing neutral currents, all possibilities for thinking about physics beyond the standard model. Um, the two Higgs doublet model is uh, one that's very popular. Um, it solves a number of, uh, of these questions that we've asked on previous slides. Um, I'm sure you've heard about this also in terms of uh, various discussions from the theorists. Um, but again, so the two Higgs doublet model, 2HGM, extends a standard model Higgs sector to include two complex Higgs doublets. So this leads to five physical states, a charged Higgs uh, plus, charged Higgs minus, pseudo, uh, an A CP odd, a heavy Higgs, and a light CP even Higgs. 
Um, and the minimally symmetric uh, standard model uh, provides an elegant solution to the hierarchy problem and potential dark matter candidates. Um, so it solves many, many, many potential problems um, that we face today. To fully explore these models, we need to carefully measure the couplings and the decay rates of the observed Higgs boson and search for additional Higgs states, which could provide a window into the underlying workings of the universe. So that's our task as experimentalists. Um, so we can search directly for decays of new natural and charged Higgs of new natural and charged Higgs bosons, new neutral and charged Higgs bosons. We can search indirectly by carefully measuring the mass couplings and production mechanisms of the known Higgs boson. Um, so this is, for instance, talks uh, by the previous excellent talk by Centiri. If we look very, very carefully, trying to find uh, a di Higgs resonant, perhaps what we find is that um, we have a, a production or a decay rate that is outside of the normal expectation. Then we could know that, oh, there's probably some sort of beyond standard model physics at work that could tell us something meaningful about the workings of the, of the universe. Um, I won't go that very much into any sort of uh, precision measurements today. You've heard about these in different talks, but they do feed into our understanding of the Higgs. And in fact, you saw um, from Centurius' talk previously, um, how the measurement of the single Higgs can uh, tell us a lot about the production mechanisms um, of, of the known Higgs boson. And I will also say, uh, although um, comment briefly that some, you do need to com complement indirect searches by direct searches, um, but this is a, a whole realm of physics that, uh, that can be discussed and debated quite a lot. Um, so neutral Higgs searches, we have many searches, which include B-associated and gluon fusion production in di boson, BB, tau tau, mu mu, decays, et cetera. Um, we also have charge Higgs searches. Uh, they often include production in top decays and searches for single charge taus because the tau is large, um, large mass and enhanced the coupling. And in particular, we, we use the 2HDM, our minimally symmetric standard model, um, uh, quite a lot in, uh, it, to search for extended sectors of Higgs at the LHC. So the Higgs sector of 2HDM models is described by four parameters. The four, uh, sorry, are described by a set number of parameters. So we have the four Higgs masses. Of 10, the 10 beta parameter, which is a ratio of vacuum expectation values or FEV, of a mixing angle between uh, the two neutral CP even, uh, light Higgs and heavy Higgs. Um, there are also multiple different types of two HDM models. So we have type one, which is one doublet and couples to fermiophobic. Um, no, one couples, one doublet couples for, uh, to only bosons, meaning that the other is Fermi, that it's fermiophobic and one to fermions. We have an MSSM-like model, type two, uh, one double couple of up-type quarks and one to down-type quarks. Um, and so you'll actually have enhanced couplings if you look for Bs in the final state. Uh, and this is good for two search for Higgs tau tau plus BB, we'll see in a couple of slides. Uh, type three is lepton specific model where Higgs bosons have same coupling to quarks as type one and to leptons in type two. And we have this flipped model where Higgs bosons have the same coupling to quark as in type two and to leptons in type one. Um, the MSSM like uh, models are quite popular right now. A lot of the phase space for the, the standard MSSM has been ruled out. So we look for models specific um, that can have in hand, uh, have uh, special uh, couplings or values um, of uh, tangent beta or the mixing angle, which still allow for phase space at the LHC. Um, yes, and for more specific MSSM models, MH is fully determined at tree level by MA and tangent beta. Um, and, and these are uh, models that we, we do study quite a lot. Um, and so an MSSM 2HDM type 2 model is a coupling to B and quartz and tau and leptons are enhanced at this high tangent beta. And I'm sure you've heard about it quite a, quite a bit, but I'll just recap one more time with a, a little bit of a CMS focus. So what we do at the LHC, and it's good to think about this in terms of an overall broad picture, especially as we go forward into the HLHC and beyond, and, and also into run three for that matter. Um, we accelerate, accelerate protons to very high center of mass energies, uh, and you can see this in the upper left-hand corner. Um, then uh, these we collide these programs and they will produce a variety of initial states. So you have various production mechanisms here of Higgs, but we have a large variety of, um, 
of particles that are produced uh, that come out of the PDF. Um, we detect these particles and we uh, record them using trigger data and acquisition systems. Then we perform event reconstruction and use software and computing to compare it to produce Monte Carlo events, so pseudo data. Uh, and then finally, perform precision measurements and search for new physics, um, which is the bulk of the talk today. Um, this is a little bit of a reminder as we think about uh, what we want to achieve with the Higgs uh, going forward uh, as we are discussing uh, its, its past in these recent days. Um, and so you can see also this nice diagram of this large collaboration from many people actually that I see in the audience even now just on Zoom uh, of the CMS and, and Atlas I had to cover up because we only had so much space on the slide. Experiments with LHCB and Elise uh, on the border of Switzerland and France at CERN. So I'll discuss today some of the latest LHC results. Um, and again, I will have to say that uh, well, <laughs> for the better or for worse, um, what happens at the LHC, at CMS and Atlas, we have so many results and so many um, papers, so many analyses, that it's really difficult to try to cover all of them. So I took a few results that are uh, interesting in terms of the BSM or exotic Higgs, uh, and I tried to give a, a, an overview of some recent ones. Um, I'm sure there are a few that we have left out, uh, but it's something that this is an ongoing and very rich area of physics right now. Um, and so what I'll talk about first today is this Higgs, to, uh, this MSSM uh, Higgs or pseudoscales to tau tau uh, and a search for vector like forks. Um, the Higgs came to, to light a pseudoscalers, a single charge Higgs search, a double charge Higgs search, search, lepton flavor violation, heavy resonances, and then talk a little bit about what we can do beyond. Um, and okay, uh, I will I will give one slide on tau's because I cannot resist. Um, basically, uh, it, a lot of the analyses, as I've already discussed, do involve tau leptons, um, and they're an important tool for uh, for searches at CMS. Um, so, due to enhanced branching ratio uh, and a relatively clean background compared to B quark jets. Um, they're very interesting objects to study and uh, can provide us good signal to, to, signal to background. So um, in this table on the left, you can see uh, a certain, the tau decaying to different, um, the tau has a very short lifetime. And so it never actually reaches the detector itself, but instead decays into these different uh, other particles, so leptons or hadrons. Um, and then from there, we can actually go and reconstruct the tau. So the tau is going to decay either to electrons or muons. Um, this is something like 40% uh, uh, almost 40% of the time, and then about 65% of the time, you see uh, the tau decaying to a single hadron, a single hadron plus pi zero, single hadron plus two pi zeros, or three hadrons and some number of pi zeros. And so what we do at CMS is that we carefully look for these specific hadronic decay modes um, and try to uh, distinguish the taus from the jets, the taus from the isolation cone using these, uh, these single decay modes. So for instance, if we want to look for uh, a hadron and a tau decaying to electron, we can use simply the electron ID. If we want to look at for a tau decaying to a hadron uh, plus pi zero, we look for a tau plus one track, and you can see this in the upper right-hand corner. And then a pi zero, which shows up as um, some hits in the, uh, the ECAL system. We can use shape uh, distinguishment. We can use uh, lifetime variables to try to distinguish these tiles from the background. Um, and so if you can look on the right and see how, how good we actually are at reconstructing tiles at CMS, and you see this row at 770 MeV and this A1 uh, intermediary um, mesons at uh, 1.26 GeV. Um, and then, of course, we can use these exact decays to, to, or, uh, to use these very precise decays uh, and reconstruction methods to try to control the systematics for TAUs. Okay, so um, let's go into the first analysis. Now that I've explained a little bit about TAUs, this hopefully, uh, just as a brief overview, will be a little bit more clear. Um, so we search, so the Higgs has, uh, the, in the MSSM uh, world, the Higgs or the pseudoscalar has an, an enhanced branching to TAUs. Um, and so we search, this is describing a search for a heavy neutral boson in resonant tau-tau final states. 
Um, this is a leading file say from MSSM searches at the LHC, and it's uh, it's referenced quite a lot. So this tau tau final site has better experimental accessibility compared to B quark jets, and the branching fraction is much better than lighter leptons. So on the left hand side, you can see the various production mechanisms um, of this uh, pseudoscalar uh, with gluon plus B, so pseudoscalar plus one B jet, or the gluon gluon fill, uh, channel in the middle, or the B plus uh, pseudoscalar in the lower. Um, and then on the right, you can see how well we were able to actually reconstruct this. So this is a mu tau in the e tau channel. Um, and what you see in yellow is uh, a Z boson uh, candidate or peak um, around 91.4 GeV. Uh, and then you can see uh, the various um, backgrounds, uh, jet to tau fakes, uh, TT bar, and then uh, others like di bosons. And also see um, the distribution. So comparing the, the various signals that we're interested in looking at uh, to the backgrounds uh, uh, on the lower right uh, where, our, where we become really enhanced. Um, so we have separate search strategies for this analysis for high mass and for low mass region, and this is primarily due to statistics. So for the high mass region, what you can see in the upper right hand corner, uh, we have fewer categories uh, than in the low mass region, uh, which is in the lower right hand corner. Um, so we use this dzeta variable, which you can see on the left, which talks about, which is essentially uh, a measurement of how back-to-back -back the electron and muon candidates are. Um, and then, and you can see an enhanced, um, yeah, you can see an enhanced uh, uh, peak for the tau tau background. And then we look also at this MT or MT total variable uh, where we can distinguish well from QCD, but also from W plus jet. So you see this nice W boson peak. Um, uh, around right below 80 GeV. Uh, so you can see actually that we do quite a good job at uh, uh, looking at a variety of physical signals with this channel. And again, uh, pointing to the categories, we look in the no B tag and the B tag category. We look at low D zeta, medium D zeta, and high D zeta. We have the various channels. These are very complex analyses. Uh, we have uh, signal region and control regions. Control regions are going to be for uh, controlling the backgrounds. Um, and here is just a, a few plots showing uh, some high signal, uh, high signal regions for this analysis. And you can see um, as well underneath, you have this ratio plot uh, where you can see a, um, a pseudoscalar uh, with a, a mass of 100 GeV. Um, perhaps a little bit of excess, so we'll discuss this in the next slide. As well as the various channels. So you have EMU, you have mu tau, and you have a double hydronic channel here. And no B tag region. So this analysis was analyzed uh, with in two different um, uh, in two different uh, um, PSM scenarios. So it, we they looked for vector-like quarks and found no excess, but there was a bit of excess found for um, a pseudoscalar uh, decaying to two taus at approximately the three, three sigma level, and so. In this lower left-hand plot, and I apologize, my mouse does not seem to be working, but around 100 GeV, you can see a slight peak above the background, maybe at the three sig, a little bit around uh, close to the three sigma level, and then uh, a little bit of a peak around the one TV range. And again, this is a, the lower left-hand plot that we see here. Um, so this will be something that will be interesting to watch as we get more statistics. Um, it, it's not quite anything to get too excited about now, but we'll keep, be keeping an eye on it for round three. So now we can talk a little bit about uh, Higgs to two light pseudoscalars. So this is part of an extended Higgs se sector. So an NMSS NMSSM allows the standard model Higgs boson to act as a portal to a hidden sector of new physics interaction. So often in these models, you have uh, a two HDM plus, uh, plus an extra singlet. Um, and this is important because the width of the observed resonance is very narrow, which means small coupling to BSM particles can lead to observable exotic decays of the Higgs bosons at the LHC. So these models are very important uh, because they can give us a, lot, a large number of channels to be searching in um, and looking for um, some deviations from the Higgs directly. Uh, so Higgs decaying to two light pseudoscalars um, and trying to look for any, any sort of deviation or any sort of uh, new resonance that could be hiding there. Um, so here in the, in the bottom, you can see 
predicted decay branching ratios of H to AA as a function of mass, um, denoted here by S. So here uh, you can see this MS, this is like pseudoscalar mass. Um, we'll be discussing the 2B2 tau, 4 tau, uh, 4 gamma, 2B, 2 mu, and 4 mu, 2 tau, 2 mu. And so what you can see actually, the reason why it's important to look at all these various decay modes is that each of them have um, strengths and weaknesses depending on where they fall in this like pseudoscalar and this is due to a complex and rich phenomenology. Um, and then also interplay interplayed with that is, um, is various uh, experimental um, aspects that cause uh, various channels to be more or less sensitive depending on the mass, depending on the reconstruction methods, depending on the backgrounds. So for instance, if you have another standard model or QCD background, so this is a, a very rich and, um, and very active area of study at CMS currently. Um, and also part of, we're uh, participating with members of TFR, TIFR, I might say. Um, so run one results, uh, so we have this Higgs to like two, two light pseudoscalar. So this just gives a nice overview. We can't go into all of the analyses today, um, but you can see some of these summary plots, which really tried to go uh, and look at very many of these uh, set, these final states. And we have a link, of course, to the run, res run results uh, using the 19.7 inverse femtobarn in femtobarns. And I provide this link as we currently are trying to chase down all these channels at CMS. So typically these A masses are between five and 62.5 GeV. We have two, a, two light pseudoscalars and we, and currently the analyses are saying, okay, each of the pseudoscalars are the same mass. Maybe someday in the future, we can think about having uh, asymmetric masses. It's a little bit more complicated, but also a very interesting uh, place to, to do this analysis. Results are compared to predictions from 2HDM and 2HDM plus singlet models. Um, and so, okay, what, uh, we're able actually to put all of these on the same plot um, since uh, the A to tau tau is directly proportional to A to mu mu and any type of 2HCM plus S as is A to BB. So we basically transform all of these into some A to mu mu ratio, and then we were able to compare the limits uh, for each of these analyses. So all the analyses uh, can be expressed in this as exclusionless uh, limits um, H over uh, standard model times branching fraction of H to A uh, and this branching fraction from A to mu mu. Um, so uh, this gives, allows us to have uh, loose constraints on BSM physics. So here's a quick overview of, of a few different uh, run one analyses. We have two mu two tau, uh, uh, final state targets uh, low mass 3.6 MA to 21 and then high mass 15 to 62.5. Um, and then we have a 2 mu 2 tau and 4 tau final states, which has uh, 4 to 15 GeV of mass range, and 4 mu final states, which can target very low mass due to Yon's very good reconstruction at CMS. We also have analyses that use boosted tau pairs for very low MA, and this requires specialized uh, reconstruction isolation algorithms. And you, you heard a little bit about boosted B pairs uh, in Santeri's talk. Um, the ideas are similar. The, uh, the reconstruction techniques are, I will uh, say, quite complicated in these situations uh, and do take extra time to carefully consider. So a lot of work has been put into this and uh, to developing these algorithms. Um, and so you can see a few of the plots uh, selected results again. Uh, um, so sorry, from, uh, from 2016. So we have uh, the low mass to mu to tau, high mass to mu to mu to tau. Um, and then this combination. Um, and then next I'll talk about this very interesting search. So Higgs to two light pseudoscalars to uh, four photons. Um, so this is a search for very low mass uh, uh, A particles. So 0 0.1 to 1.2 GeV, which they're able to do with this diphoton decay mode. The di diphoton decay mode is boosted and reconstructed as a single photon-like object, um, this capital gamma. Um, and then the probe is, it, they probe this merged gamma candidate in this uh, standard model Higgs to gamma gamma final state using a novel photon reconstruction technique and this end-to-end -end deep learning. And if you click on this, you can actually uh, link to their paper that they published with this end-to-end -end deep learning technique to reconstruct these candidates. Um, this 2D distribution was fit. Uh, uh, so the with this 2D distribution of M gamma one and M gamma two uh, was fit uh, to try to uh, look for any sort of excess. Um, 
so the signal region is from 110 m gamma gamma to 140. And then uh, sideband regions are 100 to 110 and 140 to 180. So on the left, you can see uh, the signals for the simulation. On the right, you can see what the, the background is looking like. Um, and so you get this really nice falling peak. And then if there's some sort of signal, you would, you would be able to see some sort of bump. And this is what the results are looking like. Um, maybe we have a little bit of excess around MA is equal to uh, 0 0.2, or sorry, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, um, but not quite uh, three sigma level at this point. Again, another analysis that's uh, statistically limited. It'll be interesting to look at in the future. Um, so the primary, uh, so no access was reserved. Um, and so uh, statistical uncertainty was dominant uh, for MA is greater than 0 0.1 GeV. Um, and you can see the results here. Um, next, we can talk about this interesting analysis, uh, Higgs to let two like pseudoscalars and 2B2 tau. Um, so this is actually something that my group is working on currently. Um, uh, with, with actually a former TFIR graduate uh, uh, working at Princeton. Um, and so this final state is, uh, has a relative larger branching fraction. So we use this BB and tau tau. BB has a higher branching, has a very high branching fraction, but difficult to reconstruct. Tau tau is a low, lower branching fraction, but, is, uh, uh, but is, has a cleaner signal. Um, it's a difficult channel. It is difficult to trigger on, reconstruct an ID, B jets, and tau leptons. So having both of them in the analysis means you have a large number of systematics. Um, you have a, many background, many different types of backgrounds, uh, and a variety of techniques are used: sidebar re regions, fake factor method, trying to look, uh, trying to estimate the QCD contributions. And here we only use the most sensitive channels: uh, mu tau, e tau, and e mu. And this analysis searches for two A's with mass between 15 and 60 dB and 5 GeV steps. And again, um, we're trying to currently update this uh, for, uh, uh, yeah, uh, with the full run two data set. And here are the 2016 results. So again, um, fairly good agreement with the standard model at this point um, and something that we should be looking into uh, as we get more data. And again, statistically limited, as you can even see very quite well from this plot on the left, which was the ETAO channel. Um, and here's this nice search from Atlas uh, uh, with the full um, 139 inverse femtobarns, so this full run through data set in the BB mu, mu mu channel. This provides a very clean signature with uh, 1A to mu mu and a large branching ratio from A to BB. Uh, the A boson mass hypothesis I use is between 16, 16 and 62 GeV. We use a kinematic likelihood fit uh, to improve this MBB mu mu. This basically constrains MBB uh, to be about to approximately equal to MU mu by shifting the BJET energy within the resolution. Um, and so this tries, this gives us them a, an improved angle to background. Um, and you can see a little bit uh, what you could expect. Um, so you see this MA uh, equals 50 GV, and you see the resonant peak in the signal region um, around 125 GV, where the standard model Higgs is decaying to two like pseudoscalars. And then you can see these sideband regions as well. But uh, the kinematic, uh, you can see the performance of the kinematic likelihood fit. Um, and then they, they output uh, this uh, discriminator as well, and they can use this uh, to uh, fit and create various categories. Um, so to understand the backgrounds for this analysis, uh, they use a BDT trained on seven kinematic variables to separate signal from background. Um, so you can see these variables uh, on the right. Uh, they have their MBB, the output from the discriminator, um, the difference between, for instance, the position of the B and uh, the position of, the mu of one of the mu's. Um, you can see all these variables on the right. Um, these D BDTs are trained separately on each of the 12 signal MA masses. So you can imagine how complicated this analysis becomes. Um, and you can see the outputs of the discriminators here. So actually, the, the BDTs are doing quite well at distinguishing uh, these signals from backgrounds. Um, and again, you can see the performance. So you have in red, you have the uh, signal. And then in blue, you have one of the strong, uh, uh, you have TT bar plus C plus judge background. OK. So for this analysis, some access is seen at 3.33 sigma uh, at MAA is equal to 52 GV. This analysis is dominated by statistical uncertainty currently. 
The most impactful systematics are from jet energy resolution and BJ to finish efficiency. Uh, and um, from the, compared to the previous results for just the 2016 data set, the BD, BDT actually improves the sound analysis by a factor of two and the additional data by a factor of two as well. So you can actually see a huge amount of work going into trying to improve these analyses. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what we were able to do in the future. So uh, this small amount of excess you can see around this 52 GeV, so you can see this, um, uh, this p-value plot in uh, on the left, and you see this red peak, uh, you know, the dip below three sigma, which is uh, quite interesting to see. And then you can see um, the, uh, the limit plot on the right, uh, and again, another peak around uh, about three sigma. So again, um, we, I could, we could use more statistics in this channel, we're awaiting the CMS results. It'll be a very interesting uh, publication to be made, and we'll see what we find at CMS. And as we go into uh, the next round. So next, I'll talk a little bit about charge Higgs. So search uh, for charge Higgs is uh, uh, caving to heavy uh, to a heavy uh, neutral Higgs boson and W boson with a top quark associated production. These are very complex channels, as you can see from the um, the, the diagram on the right. You have uh, top associated with uh, B and the charged Higgs. Um, and so uh, in, able, in order to be able to do the study, uh, four final states is considered. Uh, the L here is going to be an electron or a muon. So L, tau, opposite sign, same sign. Uh, they have a large uh, branching ratio. And L, tau, tau, um, so two, one lepton and two hadronic tau is opposite sign only. This is a clean signature. Um, so for each of these, uh, this, these analyses are, are essentially optimized very separately, even though they have, um, they're searching for a similar object or a similar uh, phenomenology. Um, and so the event, event selection for each are going to be quite different. So for L tau, we ask for greater than three jets, BT greater than, uh, than 30 GV, and um, BT miss greater than uh, 40 GV. And then for L tau tau, greater than two jets uh, with BT of 30 GV. Um, and again, this is due to the different statistics. Uh, this analysis uses a resolved top quark tagger as well. Uh, and they use the loose, they try to um, tag and reconstruct the top quark. And you can see, and they use the loose uh, working point over here um, in green. And really they do quite a good job just trying to reconstruct uh, this top quark, which you see uh, in the Feynman, Feynman diagram. Um, uh, and trying to uh, use this for the identification prop purposes um, and able to reconstruct this candidate. So for this analysis, an MVA signal classifier was used to discriminate backgrounds. So the primary backgrounds are TP bars, single top, B plus jets, dibosons, and fakes. And the, uh, the fitted distributions are shown to the right. So um, like I said before, uh, for um, the L tau final state, the MVA output is being fit. And for the L tau tau final state, uh, the, M, the uh, transverse um, mass uh, distribution is being fit. And again, you see that for the top plots, you have um, a large number of statistics and you're a bit more statistically limited than the bottom. And you can look at what the signal uh, could look like if it was overlaid. Um, but at this point, no real access is being seen. Uh, and again, this is analysis that could uh, benefit from more data. Um, next, we'll discuss a search for doubly charged Higgs decaying to a light lepton pair. So this it has final states with two, three, or four leptons. We have a benchmark uh, left-right uh, symmetric model. Um, and this allows for suppressed uh, doubly charged Higgs and lepton flavor violation. Here, our main backgrounds are uh, Drelian, dibosons, and, frank, and fake non-propped leptons. Um, and you can see uh, this very nice summary, summary plot that ha Atlas has put together, uh, looking at all of the various final um, uh, final states. So everything, EE, four leptons, EMU, um, it's quite a complex analysis uh, and, and a heroic effort. Um, the high values of uh, PT and MLL are used to fit variables um, for this analysis. This analysis is dominated by statistical uncertainty currently, um, and they'll be benefiting from, uh, uh, from more data in the future. So exclusion, exclusion limits are provided for the doubly charged Higgs, as well as for the, left and, uh, the L and R components of this model. Um, 
And so the combined limit excludes uh, doubly charged heat mass below uh, one, one TeV. Um, and then we can talk about another uh, interesting analysis. So heavy neutral Higgs, A to Z H. Uh, so analyses on uh, LBB, so this Higgs is going to be B bar, um, are analyzed from the gluon fusion and BBA production mechanism. So you can see these on the right, or the A, A and then ABB. Um, and they explore the weak coupling limit um, from uh, while uh, two LLWW goes to 2L4Q. Uh, this is from XW uh, and GGF for the vicinity of the weak coupling limit. So the events, we have a Z candidate with MLL from 80 to 100 GeV. This is just a selection. Two B jets or three B jets or, four, or more than four B jets, depending on the analysis. Um, so again, because we have so many various final states, uh, these, these event selections are optimized per final state. Um, and so upper limits on the, uh, on the signal time branching fractions are being set with different Higgs width and interpreted, and this results have been interpreted in two HV dam parameters from different models, type one, type two, left and specific and flipped. And you can see um, uh, this MH versus MA plot uh, exclusion, uh, exclusion plot on the right. Um, and then a very interesting um, uh, analysis, and this is the, the output from Atlas, uh, so it's Higgs gamma gamma. Um, which got a lot of uh, interest at the end of uh, run two. Um, so we have signals of, you know, a narrow width approximation makes it modeled by a double-sided crystal ball function. So really the background here is going to be this uh, Higgs gamma gamma. Um, and they try to fit this falling template um, and then use a Monte Carlo uh, peaked sig uh, signal template um, to try to look for any sort of signal outside the background. Um, uh, so you can see the limits on the lower right. Um, you know, perhaps there might be a little bit of excess uh, around you know, 1.5 or 1.6 TV, um, but okay, uh, still could use some more data and something to keep, continue looking into. And just because we can't go into all of these neutral, heavy uh, neutral Higgs searches, um, there's, there's really far too many. You can see the summary plots on, uh, from CMS and from Atlas and really a wider range of analyses, a wider range of final states. And these are all being updated with the full uh, run two data set as we speak, uh, as, as more, more analyses are still being finished. Again, we have a, a large number of um, final states and models to look at. Um, okay, you can see uh, how we're, we're doing with the various, um, yeah, various decay modes on the left and the right, and these uh, four fermion final states. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm coming, I guess, uh, how much time do I have left? Yeah, you can take uh, probably five to 10 minutes. Five to 10 minutes, okay, great. So I'm coming to the end um, of this section. So I'd also want to show uh, just a summary plot of um, MA versus tangent beta, uh, simply because today, uh, yeah, trying to go through all the analyses from the LHC is, is uh, quite some work, but you can actually see um, the various uh, Higgs, Higgs to A tau tau, we have charge Higgs, uh, we have A to ZH. So you, in particular, you'll be able to see the MSSM analyses um, with Higgs to tau tau, looking in this high tan beta, tan, tangent beta, high MA plane. And then these A to ZH boundaries come up from the bottom, really trying to close this wedge of MA tangent beta phase space. Um, and you can see a similar thing on the right. Uh, and in this, this is shown in the HMSSM scenario on the left and the MH125 scenario on the, le on the right. Um, with MHMSM not equal to 125 plus minus. Okay, so, um, sorry. Uh, so we, we go ahead and we look at these various uh, parameters and you can see that there's actually a huge amount of phase space uh, left um, for exploring the MSSM at CMS um, or, and, and at Atlas. Uh, and there'll even be a large amount of space left at, in, at future colliders. Um, and actually, I wanted to show one more point uh, after we talked about um, the, the charge Higgs, the neutral Higgses, and uh, the um, MSSM scenarios. 
Uh, so we can search also for lepton flavor violating decays of the Higgs. Uh, this is a very interesting analysis as well. So it, it supposes that uh, searches for the 125 dV Higgs decay to, uh, can decay to flavor violating couplings. So right now we consider looking for Higgs to mu mu or Higgs to tau tau. We could consider that there is some sort of higher flavor structure um, to the Higgs where we look for Higgs e tau, Higgs to mu tau, um, and this standard, so, uh, and this would be very different from the standard model where the Higgs couplings are diagonal. So we look at this in terms of decay widths and branching fractions. Um, and the updated analysis, which was done on the full run to data set, um, uh, looks at, it uses BDT discriminants to be able to improve the analysis. And you can see uh, this. Uh, sorry, just one second. <laughs> All right, give me one moment. Uh, it's a bit early here, so I might be kicked out. Thank you so much. I'll be right back. Now. Hi, sorry about that. I'm back. Let me restart my video. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so it's a quite early here. So I was sitting in an area that uh, they need to vacuum. So, um, so they, they kindly moved me to another spot. Okay, so um, so this is lepton flavor violating decays. Uh, it still works, okay. Um, and so uh, early in run two, we saw a little bit of excess, but okay, at this point, uh, it seems that no significant excess is, is observable anymore um, as we get more data, and this happens quite a lot. Uh, and so upper limits are set on branching ratios of Higgs to mu tau and Higgs to e tau. Um, and this is, again, a very interesting analysis that uh, we will they're closer to being, uh, yeah, which will be benefit from more statistics in the future. Okay, and so that actually leads me to the next section. So, uh, so what's next? You'll be hearing again about this a lot more in the next couple of days. Um, so the HLHC will allow for a factor of five increase in luminosity. Um, and so we just have a long shutdown two ending now, uh, some changes um, in the schedule overall due to the COVID pandemic, but we're on track for starting run three this year. Um, then we'll have run, long shutdown three, and then we'll be on to the HLHC, which is run four, um, and collecting a huge amount of data in, uh, the next um, 10 to 20 years. So in January 2022, the schedule is updated um, and the next long shutdown should last for three years, which means that we, um, yeah, so which means that we should start our data taking uh, of HLHC in 2019, or sorry, in 2029. And so I'll just flash briefly what we can expect. We are going to be expecting improvements on uh, Higgs couplings. Um, we're getting, uh, we're getting very close um, to the 2% level or less or 1% level for GGH for the production. Um, VBF is around 2%, 4% uh, for WHCH and TTH or less when we, when, uh, yeah, so you, you can see these plots on the left. Um, and then you can see the on the right, you can see the uh, 
um, couplings based on the decays. So Higgs gamma gamma, WWZZ, goo goo. And you see the 2% and the 4% dotted lines. And the total versus and total uncertainties versus statistical, experimental, and theoret theoretical. And already we've seen that um, we've been able to improve on a lot of our analyses through new techniques, um, improved methods, um, thinking of different ways to, to trigger on various uh, signals. And so, you know, we expect these are some, uh, some whether or not they're conservative or, um, or optimistic, um, it's likely that what we have now, what we can project now, we'll be able to do even better in the future. Um, and we should even get some guaranteed improvements as long as we are investing enough money. For instance, now we see that the theory uncertainty is the largest driver of the uncertainties for the various, um, for the various uh, measurements. And we expect this to improve in the future as uh, the theory and uncertainties are, are put in with a lot of time and effort, are beat out with a lot of time and effort. Okay, but even with that, and even with the uh, understanding or being able to measure at two or four percent uh, or better at the HLHC, um, we cannot stop studying the Higgs. Uh, the Higgs is going to be our answer to a lot of, or could be our answer to a lot of different questions, um, as I discussed earlier. Um, and so um, we can see actually the various colors. So. Uh, for instance, the Higgs is connected to things like naturalness, naturalness, the stability of the universe, CP violation, very, very many big uh, questions that exist in, the, in, um, in physics today could be answered based on these various um, observables about the, of the Higgs. So for instance, um, searching for exotic decays could tell us something about naturalness or could just tell us something about uh, the origin of electroweak symmetry breaking or the thermal history of the universe. Um, I won't go into any of these in detail, but it's a very um, rich and exciting topic of research currently. Um, and it's something that we, we cannot stop studying the Higgs and we have to continue pushing forward. Um, a number of machines will be discussed uh, in, uh, that I saw on the agenda for tomorrow. Uh, hadrons, leptons, uh, circular versus lin linear. Um, many of these options are being discussed. Um, we're also discussing US options during SNOMAS, although we're not quite as far forward as uh, the Hadron machines at FCC or maybe the ILC machine in terms of, uh, of the planning exercises. Um, you rest assured that uh, the US and all of us really should have a strong role to play in whatever uh, future um, machines are going to be built, especially Higgs factories and especially higher center of mass energies. We can discuss a little bit, and I won't go into great detail. Um, what are thinkings of what sort of what sort of precision do we need? Uh, what what mass ranges can we probe if we're looking at the one percent or the zero point one percent uncertainty on coupling standard models? Um, so what this chart is trying to tell us is that um, depending on the size of the coupling of, of Higgs coupling deviations or just by decided, depending on the precision that we can achieve. Um, new physics at different mass scales can be hidden uh, in all sorts of places. So really we need to, um, to do our best to really um, be down on these systematic, uh, systematic and theoretical experimental uncertainties uh, and do our best to try to measure each of the couplings as best as we can. Um, and then uh, I'll show you one quick uh, plot that we put together recently, which is a work in progress. So we're still getting some updated numbers, but you can see relative uncertainties from various machines. And again, I just wanted to put this as a bit of motivation, um, seeing what we could possibly do in the future uh, at, at future Higgs factories, at future high energy uh, machines. Um, and again, again, work in progress, but um, we can get to something like the sub percent level um, for Higgs EZ or Higgs WW. Um, this could be very, very interesting and compelling uh, and great motivation for having these factories uh, machines. So I'll leave it with that and say that many questions remain about the Higgs. Uh, we have searches for BSM Higgses um, and BSM interactions as they're underway at the LHC. Expect updates as we go to run three, HLHC and beyond. And I'll just make my plea to everybody that um, we want to be bold and push science as far as it possibly can go. 
uh, and we can get one step closer to so that we can get one step closer to understanding the fundamental nature of the universe in our lifetimes. So really, we should be trying to push the boundaries, thinking of everything we can do in terms of theory, in terms of experiment, uh, trying to use this particle that we we're so lucky to discover within within our lifetimes to see what next steps we can take. Um, and I took this uh, final quote from a Forbes uh, article um, just to give us an idea of what other people think about our field. Uh, and they, they gave, if, you, if you're interested, you can go ahead and click on this link. Uh, they discuss, um, they interview many people who worked at the LHC. Uh, um, and they just left it with the only way to know the truth about our universe is to ask it these questions, figuring out what the laws of nature are and how particles behave is a step forward for human knowledge and the entire enterprise of science. And the only true nightmare scenario would be if we stopped exploring and gave up before we ever looked at all. Um, so I hope this was an inspirational final quote and uh, thank you everybody for your time today. Yeah, thanks a lot, Professor Isabel, for a wonderful talk uh, and covering some uh, Higgs searches. So yeah, we yeah. it. Arnab, can you unmute and speak? Yes, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for the nice talk, first of all. Uh, my question is uh, related to one of the, uh, one of the um, questions, un unanswered questions that you touched upon initially. So you're talking mm. about the composite heats. Mm. Uh, are there any limits uh, or uh, exclusions on the, let's say, uh, from the composite heats we, we expect probably some uh, high mass uh, top quark or something like that. I mean, like uh, extra top quark. I mean, are there any limits or exclusions for those? Currently, theories? not that I, I I know of, to be honest. Um, and it's something I was looking into uh, while preparing for this talk. Um, and if, if we're honest, I think the point is that we're because we're we're still just um, trying to do a better job at measuring at, at detecting the Higgs itself. It's hard to really understand if there's a composite structure. Um, that I know there's a plot in existence that shows various limits from different colliders, and I'm going to forget currently what we can achieve at HLHC. Um, but I do remember seeing, if I remember correctly, there's a, a line for the HLHC on, the, on this plot. But my intuition mm -hmm. is that um, because we don't have, uh, yeah, because we're really at the beginning of, um, of you know, detecting enough Higgses to do uh, differential studies, although you did see a, a number of differential studies in these past couple of days that were still not quite there in terms of um, composite Higgs. Um, but it is a good question, and, uh, and if you're interested, I can even point you to the, the projection plot, uh, which, uh, yeah, uh, which okay. I mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you. Yep. Thanks for the question. Your next question, Lily. Yeah, slide nine. Mm -hmm. So here I'm a bit uh, wondering, of course, it's a CMS result, I should be able to understand this. Say, for example, this red line, okay, 1.2 TV, mm -hmm. by mass, and we are uh, looking at the uh, transverse mass, total transverse mass. Mm -hmm. but, uh, is the resolution so bad that it goes all the way up to 100 TV? I mean, um, yeah, I, I think that the, the, re, the we do it's really expect. Hard. That is the hope that we can do anything. <laughs> Where, sorry, where's the, is that, is that, was that your question? Where is the hope that we can do anything with this one? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, so to be honest, my take on this one is that um, to begin yeah, with. It, it is due to kinematic cutoff, I can imagine. Okay, 1.2 TV. Mm. That's I, the time falling. But this side, it is. Uh, but of course, uh, yeah. Sorry, I disturbed. No, no, no. I, I, I understand. <laughs> no, um, I completely. And, and to be honest, I agree. I think, I think if you want to set, um, maybe a, you know, if you want to actually have some sort of precision measurement, you're going to need more statistics, and and then uh, MT total might not be the the variable you really want to plot this in because uh, you get to such a broad peak. Um, I mean, you do have the the uh, you do have the met in this plot. So it does give you a very broad resolution. Um, this is also a log, uh, yeah, a log on the x-axis. Um, yeah, well, I guess it, it shouldn't even improve what the, uh, the resolution looks at high, at high masses. But no, I, I do agree with your statement. I think that this is a, if this is a real, yeah. yeah it's it's a, 
um, no, no, your, your point's completely taken. Yeah. Okay, so, one more question. Mm -hmm. That is like 50. Mm -hmm. So these are not the ALP. Mm -hmm. Is A. Are these ALPs? Uh, this should be, so this should be the, um, uh, I can't remember. I think they're, they're, they were also looking for ALPs. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That too. Okay. But, uh, then the point is that uh, these normal pseudoscalars, these are, the, this mass range we are exploring is different than, say, for example, in slide 17. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it just, um, we cannot do with other final states other than the photon. Photon we can still manage, and that's why we are able to extend to such a lower mass values. Yeah, and I, and I believe it's a mix of that. Plus, if you go to really, really light, yeah, if you go to really, really light MA, then you can't really do the M tau or the E tau or the E mu because you could maybe do E mu actually, but uh, E tau and mu tau would be too hard. You'd be highly, highly. Boosted. Is there some other dedicated analysis for action like particles? Um, yes, there is. And actually, I didn't, I didn't mention that, but I even, I think one of these, uh, I think even the gamma gamma one that we were just discussing, that one should, should also analyze that. I didn't mention it today. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Nice talk. Is okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Quite extensive. Thank you. And uh, th thank you so much for having me know. And uh, I hope that I, I, I covered as much as possible, but okay. Um, yeah, the, there are a lot of a uh, lot more analyses that are quite interesting. So, any other questions? Okay, thanks a lot once again, Isabel. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you. Thank you. I wish I was there in person. Yes, I hope you can come some other time. Let's see. Fantastic. Thank you. The should cool down fast. Thank you.